and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Tyler, also known as the Chez, and this is Chezzy Tunes, where I try to bring humor and entertainment to the EDM space. And it's finally time. It is here. I can finally check out Smile. I'm really excited about this. I've heard kind of mixed reviews, but I did enjoy the trailer. You know, the sequel's coming out soon, so I think it was a good time to finally check it out. Got the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray, just so I can get that premium, best quality possible. Uh, so I guess we'll just go ahead and pop it in and check it out. But no, in all seriousness, Porter Robinson, smile is here. It is just past midnight. I am ready. It is available in my time zone and it is time to check it out in all of its glory or at least presumed glory. We don't really know yet, but we will find out very shortly. For anyone that's been following my channel for a little bit, you know I'm a big Porter fan. In fact, I kind of made this channel to react to this album. Once it was announced, once Cheerleader came out, I was like, you know what? I need to have a place to react to this thing when it comes out. So I made this channel in preparation. I built up my video catalog I got some subscribers and now we're here on this day ready to react to the first reason I even created the channel in the first place. So this is a big day for me and hopefully it's a big day for you guys too. We are here to react, to smile, front to back and give my initial thoughts. I have already checked out all four singles. Cheerleader is the only one I didn't actually do a reaction video for, but the rest of them I have. So if you haven't seen those, be sure to check them out. I'm still going to listen through those again during this video. I'll just give my thoughts as they stand today on those tracks. But the rest of it, obviously, we're going in blind. We're all going in blind. It just came out and that is very exciting. I've never been able to react freshly to a Porter Robinson album on camera before. So no pressure, I guess. No pressure on me. I will preface by saying I am not the best at like picking out the meaning of songs on first listen. We are going to have a lot of songs to get through and a lot to dissect. So I'm probably going to miss the mark on trying to piece together what all of the songs mean or what the album as a whole means. But obviously, feel free to leave me all your insights in the comments so that I can learn more because that's what I'm going to be doing over the coming weeks is listening to this, trying to dissect it, trying to learn more about it, and trying to fall deeper in love with it, assuming I do love it. But I love Porter, I love worlds, I love nurture, I love language, and everything in between, and I'm very excited to move into this. So it is my honor, it is my pleasure to dive into Smile. So let's start with the first track, Knock Yourself Out. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. So Knock Yourself Out has definitely grown on me. They've all grown on me uh, out of the singles. I threw my phone into the sea. Mm. Like all of them are still kind of a little silly. You know, all the lyrics, the verses are a little silly, a little funny or quirky, a joke almost, a short-lived joke, if you will. Uh, but those choruses, they always come around. They be, they be hyping me up. I be singing along. They're catchy. I mean, undeniably catchy choruses for all these songs. Let it all out. <laughs> In terms of the singles, I think it's more or less release order is the order I would put them in. Bitch, I'm Taylor Swift! Man, everyone's gonna be screaming that part live. It's gonna be great. I want everyone come dressed as Taylor Swift. That'd be great. I'm coming. Just in general, I'm coming right now. Right now, I'm, it's happening. It's happening. But yeah, this song, it's just, it's just a vibe, you know? I think it's also one of the more accessible of the four so far that I've, that I've heard. Even if it does have a lyric or two that's a little goofy, it's definitely very digestible. You could show this to someone and they'd probably have a good time with it, you know? It's a beat, it's got a fun chorus. So yeah, knock yourself out, XD. It's just a good song. It's just good vibes. 
It's nothing groundbreaking. Sometimes you just want those little poppy tunes that get stuck in your head. It definitely grew a lot on me since I first heard it. If you watched the reaction, I, it wasn't that I was turned off from it. I did enjoy it, but it didn't blow me away or anything. And it still doesn't, but I list, I put it on pretty frequently. It's fun to sing along to. It's a beat. It's got that fun energy. You just want to kind of dance. And the chorus is catchy. It's catchy. Next up, you know it. I know it. It's cheerleader. Cheerleader on top, baby. <laughs> Cheerleader is still my favorite of the singles because it just does everything right. It's got that creativity. It's unique. It's different. It's got that crazy lead synth that just goes wild and just ooh, pumps you up. The chorus is great. The chorus is an anthem. You just want to cheer it with everybody in the crowd. I'm so excited to see it live. The verses are my favorite verses in any of the songs so far that we've heard. And obviously the music video. The freaking music video? Are you kidding me, Porter? But we're going to listen to it again. Let's freaking go. Oh man. Slow down. I can tell you're acting your heart out. She's got a heart to rise. And she draws me kissing other guys. See, that's what I want in life. Nobody, nobody draws me kissing other guys. Where are you at? Do I even have fans? Does anyone care about my videos? Where's the fan art? Let's go! Not your fault you're living in a madhouse. It's just okay. I, was, I like this little. Hold on. To the background. I like that little no change on background. That. Ooh, tickles me. I get tickled. I laugh. I get tickled so good by that one. And then the harmony. This song just does everything right. Definitely the best choice for the first single you could have put out. Got me so pumped. Like, that is going to go off. It's going to go off. The whole crowd. It's not me. Going to be screaming it, man. Oh. And I love this bridge. This is what made me fall in love with the song was the bridge. The bridge. The bridge? The bridge? Do I wish her the best or do I actually miss her? Also, if you make your hearts like this, how is that easier? How is that easier than this? Who does that? Gosh, these youngsters. But yeah, that, that bridge, like the lyrics of that bridge just really resonated with me. It meant a lot. And then it just gets right back into it, man. And also, the last line of this before it gets into like the solos and stuff, the way it hits right here. Hold on. When you're not there. And then like it stops for like just a second and comes back in. It just hits. It just hits, man. Cheerleader just smacks. I get smacked. Now this is solo. Go crazy. And then it has a very abrupt ending, but that's okay. You know, we're just up here. We're, we're high. We're high and euphoric. And, oh. and then it ends. It's that easy. But yeah, Cheerleader is still my favorite of the four just because it does everything right. It does, I mean, it has, draws me kissing other guys or whatever. It has a couple kind of silly lyrics, but honestly, they make sense. They, they are fun to sing. It's very well made. It's good writing. It has that deeper meaning that one, I can actually pick up on. I actually understood the meaning listening through it. And if not, even if you do just take it as surface level, it's still enjoyable. The chorus obviously kicks my butt in the best way possible. It's super well produced. It's super energetic. It's something you want to sing along to. It's just, it does, it checks all the boxes for a good, poppy, energetic, melodic, anthem you know it really be hitting so cheerleader obviously not much needs to be said cheerleader's great and fantastic music video next we get into russian roulette i am not gonna cry this time i'm not gonna cry i've heard this song enough times i'm not gonna cry i promise but there is something that i will need to mention during this song hopefully you won't cry but we're gonna listen to russian roulette here we go 
Now, Russian Roulette, if you watch my video, I gave it very high praise. Not that it doesn't deserve high praise, but I don't love it quite at the level I did in that moment. I was very emotional in that moment, so I gave it a lot of extra brownie points for making me cry. But it is enjoyable. It's just, it definitely has that goofiness, more so in the second verse, but it's still kind of fun to sing along to. The chorus is great. The chorus is fantastic. And my favorite part is, I guess you would call it the bridge, or the, like, the chorus B. Not the slow part, but the part right before that. That's, I love that part. I skipped that part constantly. I love that part so much. But anyway, we're gonna vibe. We're gonna vibe. And it's got a little Sad Machine reference. Who doesn't like a little Sad Machine, Sa Sad Machine reference? Who doesn't love a little Sad Machine reference? And also the little no change on smile. Good. Just that little touch. So good. Some of his best vocals, I'd say, are on Russian Roulette on that chorus on Russian Roulette. Very good. And then, yeah, this, it's this verse, man. It's just this verse is too wacky. I get it, I understand, but it's just weird. <laughs> I don't wanna hear about the monkey pissing in his mouth. That's not something I want all my friends to hear and sing along with. <laughs> Crazy! But really, it's just that line. <laughs> Just make the most of it. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! It's this part. This part's so good. I love this little ver- or or whatever you want to call this part right here is my favorite part in the song. I keep coming back to it. I love singing it. It's just good. That part's so good. A little sad, but it's so good. The sentiment expressed here is obviously good and heartbreaking, and I'm sure I probably will cry seeing this live still. I'm still afraid about seeing it live, but um, I expressed some of what was going on in the original Russian Roulette reaction that I did, and uh, for... For that line specifically, um, unfortunately, I will not be able to kiss my cat one more time. I had to um, put him down about a week and a half ago um so i'm glad i had that video where i did kiss him one more time um so the sentiment is very strong you know very much just enjoy what you have enjoy those small moments go kiss your kiss your mom or say how see your mom go see your mom or kiss her i don't care do you do you i don't know what you up to in your life just enjoy your life don't take things for granted you know live live don't you don't want to die live your life there's so much good out there there's so many things that you take for granted that you need to just see and enjoy and do again it's gonna be okay everybody i mean listen to this beat you know it's gonna be okay how could you not be okay when this is on when this fat beat comes on everything's okay the kick drum and bass suggests this song is coming to a close yep yep boo we don't want it to end russian roulette 18 minute cut Three hour cut? I just want Porter to list things he wants to do again for seven hours straight? Extended mix? Come on. All right. And that's Russian Roulette. Obviously, it's one of my favorites in terms of what it's expressing, in terms of the sentiments it has. Obviously, it did make me emotional when I first heard it, given the context of what I was going through in my life. And I'm still going through to an extent, but I am, despite what I just said, getting better. I, I am still on that uptrend. I had a dip for a second there, <laughs> but we're back, we're moving up. But it is something that, you know, is always relevant, you know, to remember those sentiments and remember those things in your life that are important that you probably don't pay much mind to or don't think about as super important or meaningful, but they are. Those are the things that matter. You know, your family, your friends, your just these mundane things in life that you, you want to make sure you get to do at least one more time. Don't take them for granted because you'll miss them if you don't have the chance to do them again. Or, you know, if something happens, like you would miss that stuff. So yeah.
I'm recording this after I recorded the entire video, so ignore that it might look a little bit different, but I also wanted to point out that I'm in the Russian Roulette Lyric video, officially. My face and everything, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Just wanna put that out there. All right, let's move on. But enough of that sappy crap. Well, there's probably more sappy crap to come, I'm sure, but next up is a f the first new song that we have not heard we are gonna be blind reacting to. Next up is Perfect Pinterest garden. I am not a frequent Pinterest explorer. I don't really use Pinterest very often. I've used it here and there, but this is the perfect Pinterest garden. I've always wanted someone to make a song about that. So Porter, you made my dreams come true. Let's check it out. Hopefully there's lyrics. There's not lyrics on Spotify. So let me bring them up. Oh, vocal chops, vocal chops. All right, let's go. I like this rhythm here. I don't care if you buy it. I just want you to pay. Keep you there in my pocket. Because you got in the way. I know you so much better. Do you understand? It's just some catchy stuff, you know? Ooh. Okay. I love some O.O.s, you know? I'm a sucker for O.s. I just lost the game. I'm sorry. Let's go. All right. Another fun little catchy chorus. I'll be singing along. And I just, I love this little guitar. It's, it's good. Uh, the percussion, I think, some of the percussion in these songs aren't great. Like the snare, I don't know. The reduction's so good. That snare though, I don't know. Sing it, baby. Get that title drop. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Chorus, one more time, give it to me. I love the OOs. I the, the it's my weakness. My kryptonite is vowel sounds like that. The OOs, the ah ahs, the ooples and banunus, bononos, iples and benignis, all that stuff. I love it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was pretty good. I'll admit, I didn't catch an immediate meaning behind it. Is it just supposed to? Is it? Is it kind of? It, what I think I'm gathering is it's. It almost sounds like it's being sung from, like it's like the reverse of cheerleader where it's almost like the like the fan, like me singing to Porter, like this, imagining this perfect life, wanting to whatever, be closer to him or you know, be imagining myself being his friend or getting married or, you know, whatever, maybe. I don't know. That's the best I can get from it. I don't think I necessarily need to know the meaning. I think it's still catchy and sometimes catchy is fun. I don't think it was doing anything too crazy, pretty tame production overall but I do like that guitar I like the beat I like kind of just the overall vibe of it and another little catchy chorus I love the uh oh's perfect Pinterest garden also really just like that like immediate weird vocally chop thing in the beginning that's just there for like a second I don't know what that's about but I like it <laughs> but next up is year of the cup I really don't know what that means I know year of the dog year of the the, the, the pig the Chinese zodiac I know that stuff we'll find out it's none of my goddamn business what's in the cup but it's a beautiful thing man Okay. But it's not a beautiful thing because nobody knows what's on the cup. That's Little Wayne. That's and apparently Tim Westwood, thing. according to Genius, I don't know who Tim Westwood is. When people drink alcohol, they react. Uh-huh. So whatever the hell was in my cup, the only reaction I did was got more popular, <laughs> more successful. I probably should pick that cup back up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Very. I like the way it's, it's using the space. It's it's tickling the eardrums. We love a good piano. That's pretty. Very good vocals on this one. Oh man! Don't never apologize for who you are. 
as you should. As you should. Keep drinking. Keep sipping. Chug it. I don't care. Wow. Yeah, we're, this is some deep stuff here. Damn. Mm. Wow. You think you'll let people down and define some perfect apology. Oh. Answer was obvious. Oh, it's like obvious. falling apart. Uh, yeah, destroyed and distorted Answer a little bit. Okay. Wow. Um. Interesting. So I'm. I don't. That type of song isn't necessarily one I would listen to. Like in terms of just like a song, not looking deep into the lyrics because the lyrics, the lyrics are pretty heavy. The lyrics I can relate to and understand a lot, but in terms, I'm just strictly the music itself, the actual music. It's not really my, it's something I usually would gravitate towards. It's just not my style of music, like kind of acoustic, slow, and you know, like a ballad of sorts. I definitely appreciate what it is. I appreciate what it's going for, but it just isn't personally for me. But with that being said, the lyrics, I very much resonate with in my own way. I mean, I feel like everyone can resonate with it in their own way, especially, yeah, the sentiment of having to apologize for who you are, feeling like you're the problem, feeling like this is what, like this situation went poorly because of you or like a flaw that you have or you could have been better or you need to change yourself or someone like everyone, everyone's like ashamed of you or everyone's just embarrassed by you or what, you know, whatever it is. And that, you know, you have like your own self-confidence, your image, your self-image and what, how you view yourself just gets in this place where you feel like you're just a failure and you have to apologize to other people just for being you just for being here just for existing like i am sorry i am like this this uh, i'm so sorry i burdened you with me who i am and then i can't like th was did this actually happen because i saw him, he, he's talking about the bus i assume like the tour bus or something fuck you you don't deserve me but really he wanted to say help me <laughs> you know he's he needs help he wants help i've never said that those words specifically but i've definitely pretended things were all right or tried to put up a front or act like i don't care everything's good like eh, i don't need nobody i'm me baby i'm living my life but really deep down you know i I wanted to reach my hand out. I wanted someone to grab on. I wanted someone to help me, to get me through something, to listen to what I have to say, but I don't want to be a burden. I wouldn't want to burden them with my problems or who I am or these thoughts that I'm having. So I very much understand and resonate with some of these lyrics. In terms of the actual song itself, again, not completely my style. I don't know how often I would come back to it specifically. I will listen to it. Maybe it'll grow on me as a lot of the songs have. But on just an initial listen, I resonate with it on a meaning and a lyrical scale, but not so much with the music itself, just as a style, a, a personal preference, a taste type of deal. I feel like I should have got a cup of something for that song. That would have been relevant. That would have been a funny bit, maybe. What's in my cup? Who knows? Doesn't matter. Fuck you, bitch. Don't matter what's in the cup. Anyway. All right. Well, next up, we're at the halfway waypoint uh we're moving into kitsune maison freestyle which we have heard uh, and i've reacted to and honestly this one i've put on a lot i've really started to really like kitsune maison freestyle this one is moving its way up in my rankings just because like the verses are fine i, I mean the verses could be a little quirky especially you know your girl was looking at my bag or staring at my bag i'm on a diet can't eat that you know it, there's some silly things in there but the chorus i really really like like the vibe of the chorus. I like the harmony with the like uh, uh, the pitched up vocal, like the almost nurture esque type vocal, like harmonizing with himself. I like just the vibe of it, the instruments, like it's just a good tone to it. And the lyrics themselves, the the melodies themselves, like the way the chorus is sung. Again, music theory. I don't know anything about it, but just the way the notes change do, 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 do. just the way it kind of hops along through the chorus really is catchy and really makes me feel something so i've been loving this song anyway we're gonna move into it get to the maze on freestyle let's go it's been a big grower for me probably the biggest grower get to the maze on. 
Kitsune Maison. Kitsune Maison. Kitsune, put the money in the bag. All those little vocal flares, those little touches that he adds in a lot of these songs really make the difference, you know? But yeah, how can you not vibe with the chorus right here? It's such a vibe. It's such a vibe. It's so good. I'm turning it up, cranking it. It's, it's so good. It's just like peaceful. It's just like the way his vocals sound. They're, it's very soothing. It's a very soothing chorus. Where I'm at, where I'm at. Undercover. And I get it all back. That's right. I spend it, it just comes right back to me, baby. Flex. Your girl was staring at my back. What? Uh uh. So sad. <laughs> Sorry. On a diet, can't eat that. Give me a salad. Let's go. And what does he mean by that? Grow out my eyelashes? You can't do that? What are you all about, Porter? Porter Robinson? What kind of name is Porter? God! The one thing I'll say about this album is there's some of these like little inserts, these little intermissions, like Little Wayne on You're the Cup or uh, that little intermission in Kitsune Maison. Like, I think they're good for that first run through, but I feel like they become bothersome on re-listens personally. I think it kind of disrupts the flow of the song when you keep coming back to it. You know what I mean? Like they match the sentiment. I get it. It makes sense. But when I'm re-listening to the song, it becomes a little tedious to go through. Thankfully, it's relatively short. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But yeah, Kitsune Maze on Freestyle has definitely grew on me. I mean, I already liked it when I listened to it because you could see in the reaction that I did that I was already getting the chorus, like immediately the notes in which it is sung got stuck in my head because it was just, it just clicked in just the right way. So I keep coming back to it a lot. I really just like that chorus. It just hits. I like the mood of it. It's just got this pleasant, casual, just laid back tune, tonality. And I, I resonate with that. And the chorus is good and catchy and just, ah, I just like it. Is that so wrong? Am I wrong? All right. Now you've got four tracks that we have not heard to close this, clo close this thing out. I can't even speak. I'm so excited, I guess. Some of the names of these songs got me worried. The next one is Easier to Love You. You know if it's related to love that it could probably, you know, get under your skin and tug at the heartstrings. This man does know how to write about love. The way he talks about Rika, like talking about your wife and the way that he does. It, yeah, anyway. Oh, all right. I, I'm very, I'm worried. I am worried. <laughs> I'm worried about this one. This one could be emotional potentially. Here we go. Easier to Love You. Okay, I got the guitar. It's gonna be a ballad. I feel it. We're getting a love ballad over here. Love ballad, Porter. That's his name. Like, it's crazy how much these songs, like you click on one of these songs and you're like, this isn't Porter. Who is this? Who did Who did you put on? Oh gosh. I like the way that that note is held. Beautiful. Mm. Oh. The vocal, the harmonies. Ooh. Ooh, all these layered vocals in here. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, of course I'll join the gym. We always want to join the gym. Very lovely vocals. Can't stress that enough. Wow, he keeps pulling out more stops. He's 
impressing me even more. Okay. You're really showing off with these vocals here. This is just a ballad, man. Like a banjo? Ooh. Yeah. Do it. Do the thing. Very, very cool. What a vibe. What a vibe. So that was interesting because I mean it is a love ballad but it's not about another person it's not him speaking about his love for someone else it's very much expressing the same types of sentiments you would in a love song to someone else but instead it's about himself it's about who he is now and how he like expected he would be when he was younger like how he would imagine his future self would be and how much he like was excited for like ooh. You know, my future self is going to do all these things and join a gym and be successful and be happy. And he's going to be great. And I'm going to love him. I'm going to love who I'm going to be. And now he's he's here. He barely even recognizes himself. He's just comparing himself to his younger self and before the responsibilities of adulthood and inner turmoil and stress and depression and all the other anxieties of life that Porter is going through, as well as probably every other person that has ever existed. And just how it would be so much easier to love himself if he could see himself the way his younger self did and i feel like that's a sentiment so many people can relate to including myself because i'm pretty proud of where i am in life it's taken time it's been a journey it's all it's a non-stop journey i feel like it's always happening of learning to love yourself being proud of who you are understanding you know you're not perfect you're your own person you have your quirks you have your your flaws but that's what makes you you and that not no matter who you are, not everyone is going to like you. Not everyone is going to think you're cool. Not everyone is going to think you're funny. Not everyone is going to want to spend their time with you. And that is okay. But it is a hard pill to swallow. It's hard to come to terms with that stuff. It's hard to balance the day-to-day, -day, the, the adulthood struggles and the anxieties of life. Like, it sucks. It's hard. And growing up, like, you always... I mean, some people, maybe you don't, but I know I very much imagined, like by this point, I'm almost 30. I'm going to be 30 very soon. And I always imagine, you know, when I'm 30, that's so far away, 30 years old. I'm going to be so far along. Maybe I'll be married. Who knows? I'm going to have a nice job. I'm going to be living it up. I'm going to have so many friends. I'm going to be so happy. Things are going to be good. Any problems I'm dealing with right now or any problems I might have been dealing with in my 20s, they're going to be resolved. We're going to be living it up. And now here I am. And although I like who I am, you know, I'm probably not exactly where I expected myself to be. I'm probably not as happy as I expected myself to be. I've got things going on and life sucks sometimes. And that's just what it is. But it's like, I wish I could still have that outlook that my younger self did with just, I'm, you know, <laughs> I can't shake the feeling that I'll be happy by the time I'm him. That's all you can hope for. <laughs> and sometimes you don't quite get that, but there's still a lot in life to love. There's still time to do the things you want to do, be the person you want to be. That's a tough sentiment. That's, I like that. But I do very much resonate with it. I think that's a pretty universal sentiment that everyone can relate to. And I think it's a very beautiful song. Very, very beautiful song. Very much admire and respect that one. Very well written song. Very good. Just good. It was good. Really good. Very emotional. I could see a lot of people getting emotional to that. I could see a lot of people getting very emotional to that. And I would not blame you in the least. I'm going to hold it together, but I would not blame you if you did it. It's okay to cry. Let it out. I've cried. I've cried on camera. It's whatever. Let it out. Next up, we've got Mona Lisa with the only feature on the album. We got Mona Lisa featuring Frost Children, whom I am not familiar with, so I don't know what to expect, but it's the only feature on the album, so that's pretty significant. So Mona Lisa, let's go. Ooh, I like the kind of distortion on this. It's like almost like a siren. Oh, whoa, whoa. This is a really cool production. Very kind of gritty. This is really cool production. Ooh. Oh, 
Wow, the chorus on this, or the, the production on this whole thing is really cool. I really like the energy of it. That's so, yeah, unique. It's, it's fun. Ooh. Ooh, he's everywhere. Let's go! Ah, I like that. Yeah, the processing on the vocals and the weird synths. Very, very fun to listen to. Ah, it's so angsty. Too late, blood on my face. Okay, that was cool. I really, I, that was some of my favorite production so far. So different, so different. Not even just for Porter. I feel like it was just produced. I haven't heard, there's probably, I don't know if that's what Frost Children, all, the type of music they always make because I'm not familiar with them. If they do, I need to check them out for sure. But yeah, very cool. I haven't heard a song produced quite like that. It was very, very cool. I don't, that's all I can say is cool. Cool and fun. Fun and cool. Wow. Second grade Tyler coming out again. In terms of like catchiness, I feel like at least on an initial listen, it falls lower on the catchiness scale with the chorus, but I'm sure that will change with future listens, but it didn't quite hit me with the earworm like some of the other ones did initially, but everything gets stuck in your head if you listen to it enough. That one definitely attracted me from a production standpoint more than some of these other ones did initially just like ooh, 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 you know oh very cool very cool and i will need to check out frost children as far as meaning goes i'm not gonna try to dig into it i might just mess it up you just tell me what, what does mona lisa mean what does it mean to you i don't know what does the actual mona lisa mean to you I feel like we don't talk about her enough. Great painting. Next up, which we kind of got spoiled about a little bit during that one live stream he did where he was doing a bracket of all his songs, all his music, because this was on the bracket and it hadn't even been released yet. So we kind of got the name teased a while back. Is there really no happiness? Which just sounds like it's gonna mess me up, you know? That's a deep question. What you got for us, Porter? Yeah, I like all these like, Gritty, distorted, almost piercing the way the. Uh, sorry, got distracted. We're gonna move on from that thought. Love the little vocals, the little vocal chops in here. I love them. I love them. I like them and I love them. I like, I love them. Me too, me too. I was there. Mmm. Okay. I like the the notes that are being sung here. Of course, here we go. Nope. Hold on. Gotta build to it. I'm cranking it up. Crank it up. Give it to me. Ooh. Ooh. Sing it, Porter. Oh, oh, sing those notes. Woo, nice, man. I said that, I said the nice word. It's fine. Let it slide. Ooh, me too. I'm all so nostalgic. It's bad. How to change you. This chorus, man. Wow. That note without, I can't even hit it. I can't even hit the note. <laughs> Good one. Wow. So is this all just about nostalgia and just like not being happy without it? Not being happy without like memories and uh, like, the things you you know you grew up with and the memories of your past 
Maybe? I don't know. Guys, I suck at this. I suck at this, guys. But I really liked it. And I'm very, a very nostalgic person myself. So nostalgic. There's some of my habits as you're showing my accent. And you're just like me. I feel like I trained you. I've been trying to change, but I don't know how to change you. Is he speaking to us? Because he's almost made us more nostalgic because of the music. And we're always, you know, we're just so nostalgic about, you know, worlds or nurture, whatever it is. And he's changing. He's able to get past the past things in, in himself and live in the now and do the things he wants to do in the now and not be defined by his past music or past self, but he doesn't know how to change us. Is that what he's saying in that part? I don't know, guys. I don't know. I, I think I like the sentiment. I think I understand it. But yeah, geez, that chorus, the, he'd be singing. This man be singing. I mean, he was a singer, I guess, but now he's like a singer. <laughs> <laughs> he went from a singer to a singer. Wow. That means I can't really sing the chorus along with you. I'll have to lower it by an octave to sing with you. But hey, it's fine. I'll be your, you know, I'll be the low note. I'll harmonize with you. Me, me, me. But he'd be singing the production on this one. Like once the chorus hits, what the, once those drums kick in, like it's like, bad. It comes in full force swinging with those feelings. The song itself feels nostalgic, which is, you know, probably the point. And is there really no happiness? I mean, that's just a great, it's a great question and a great song title. Yeah, I enjoyed that one. I very much enjoyed that one. That one was good. That was good. That was good. All right, we got, we're, we're already at the end. We're already here. Final track. We're already at the end of the road. It's kind of sad. It's kind of nostalgic. We've been on this journey. We're, we're here at the end. Here we go. Final track. Everything to me. No, he's about to pour his heart out, isn't he? He's about to come in with some emotional bullshit. I feel it. This is very pretty. Yeah. It's over. Mm. Okay. Mm. There's a little extra melody being thrown in there. It's beautiful. This is... This is get the lighters out, put the phone flashlights on. Get emotional, sing along. Love the use of guitars in this album. And this song specifically, like this is very, very beautiful. Ooh. Crush me like a plushie. Crush me like a plushie. Say it, Border, it's fine. Sing this freaking song, Porter. Yeah, this is gonna be one of those songs, man. This is this is a great closer. This is finishing up the set, finishing up the tour, finishing up the track list. Everyone in the room is crying and we're singing. We're loving each other. It's just you and me in this room, all of us. This is everything. You're living the moment, enjoy the moment. Wow. So this one, I'm pretty sure I have it right. This one is like the love ballad. To us, to us, the audience, to us, the listeners. You know, he, he has put him, he's fully put himself out there. He's put his heart on his sleeve, his emotions. He's really opened himself up through some of these songs. And then all of us, we're in this room. It's just us and the air between us. This is a moment. We are living it. This, this is everything. Just us, especially once we were actually in the room with him on the tour, having this moment, sharing this moment together. And the second verse of you don't know me, but, but you know me, you know, we don't, 
personally know Porter. We uh, very few, if any of us, have met Porter, spoken with Porter, know him on a personal level. But at the same time, given how vulnerable he's been through his music and some of his lyrics, we do know him on some level. You know, he's led us in to certain intimate parts of his self, his emotions, his, his inner thoughts and feelings. But, you know, that can still be difficult. I guard my soft mind because I have to, didn't want to. You know, this kind of fame, this kind of just having fans, having everyone watch you, putting yourself out there, that's a, that's that's hard. That's scary. That's You have to protect yourself. You're going to feel the pressure. You're going to feel scared. You're going to feel like you have to keep one-upping yourself or you, that you have to live up to the expectations of the fans or, you know, of yourself, your own expectations. And that's a lot of pressure. But at the end of the day, like it, it's just you and me. It, we're here. We're in this moment. This is it. This is what I'm here for. This is everything right here, right now. Let's just sing it. Let's be here together in this moment and just enjoy it, you know? Well, that was Smile. Once you see it, it's too late. I mean, I don't really know what that means. Like unnerving, scary as hell. Like who who was writing these reviews? I didn't get that at all. Kind of false advertising, honestly. Anyway, but really, it's such a, a unique album. Like it really, it is so deeply personal. I mean, it get it has its goofy moments. It has its like, I'm just going to be a pop star and be silly. But then there's those lines or two or the chorus where it just hits you with a gut punch. It's like, hey, we're having a good time. It's a pop song. And then, oh, just cuts you with this emotional line that makes you want to reflect on your entire life up to this point. And then the second half of the album, especially really just really tries to dig deep into uh, who Porter is, how he feels, how I feel about myself, how I feel about my past self, my current self, my future self, uh, and my relationship with music and with Porter and everything. Like, oof. There's a lot to take in. There's a lot to dissect. I will need to listen to this multiple times. I will say, I will say, this is probably, some of them, some of it is Porter for sure. Some of it, like most of the album, it's very, you know, acoustic. It's very poppy. It's very like ballad E, very guitar driven a lot of it it's such a different vibe compared to his previous work which is the intention he usually changes it up with each era with each album but he really puts himself out there the, his vocals are so good throughout this album and very rarely because like with nurture usually he was pitching up the vocals or you know his regular voice was hidden was layered with another voice or something like that but this is almost fully just completely him his natural voice with some processing obviously but it's porter he's here his authentic self is here uh which is you gotta admire that we very much love that porter i i will say oh as a whole I'll, some of the songs aren't necessarily my vibe they aren't necessarily the type of music i would normally listen to just in terms of the style alone because it is porter and because of the lyrics i resonate with a lot of the lyrics a lot more meaning for that reason i'll probably come back to them it's tough between this or nurture but this feels like an album you could share with more people compared to something like worlds where obviously i love worlds but worlds is a lot of the tracks on there are harder to show just like an average person like for an just your average Joe to enjoy. Like you throw on Flickr and your mom might look at you a little weird. You know what I mean? But I could throw on most of these and probably get a good response. I think it's a very digestible, very raw, very emotional album for sure. A lot of these songs are probably going to hit a lot of people in the gut and really bring out some childhood trauma or fears of the future or some self reflection you know like there's so many good sentiments here that just anyone can relate to in their own way this is an album that is going to resonate with a lot of people i wholeheartedly believe that does it resonate with me does it click with me here and there here and there i can't say my expectations were blown away i can't say it disappointed me either like i don't i don't know it just it's different it's different. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm not necessarily upset with what I was given. But some of these tracks, like everything to me is a beautiful closer. That is going to be such a beautiful moment to have on the tour. That is going to be something like I feel like this tour, especially because it sounds like he's going to incorporate his previous music as well. Whenever everything to me comes on, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful moment of like this build up to this this release of just it's me and you. We're here. This is it. Let's bask in it. 
I enjoyed a lot of the production on things. Mona Lisa was probably one of my favorites in terms of production uh, outside of the ones we've already heard. Easier to love you again. What a great sentiment. Is there really no happiness was fun. Like all of them were very fun and unique. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to swallow. I'm excited to go back in and take it all in again. But what an album. What an album. I don't know if I can fully process my thoughts right now. I really don't know. Like I said, some of the songs didn't resonate with me from the musical perspective. Like they aren't necessarily the types of songs I would go and listen to myself. But that being said, I do resonate with the lyrics. So maybe, maybe it's worth me diving into them. Maybe it's worth me putting them on. But yeah, the songwriting, especially in the second half, the production and the singing, the singing, man, all very good. I'm glad he's put himself out there in this way. I'm glad these songs are out here. I'm glad Smile is here for us to enjoy. I just need to process my thoughts more. Maybe I'll do a formal review at some point once I've had time to sink in. It had moments that impressed me. It takes its time. Anyway, I think that's all I got for you for now. Hopefully you guys enjoy the reaction. What did you guys think? What do you think of Smile? I genuinely want to know. I feel like this is going to be a divisive album because it is, you know, there's moments, sure, that are reminiscent of his previous work. But for the most part, this is a fairly large departure. Porter's still in there. He's still doing his portery thing. There's still those emotional lyrics and sentiments in there that Porter has always had in his music. But it is a very different tone overall. So I can totally understand if this just isn't your jam, if you do not like smile that is understandable and i would not blame you so i am curious what do people think where would people put it amongst his catalog what was your favorite track what was your least favorite track how many times did you cry i don't know tell me it all as i said i do have more porter related content i plan to make so stick around for that uh, if you are a porter fan or if you just like electronic music i do react to other things and if you have anything i should react to next definitely let me know. But yeah, Smile's here. It's out, everybody. We can listen to it. And the tour is around the corner, and I'm very excited to see the boy, Porter Robinson, once again. And probably cry. I didn't cry in this video, but I've just, I've done a lot of crying recently. I've done a lot of crying. I got it all out. Maybe I'll cry later listening to it on my own. But cheerleader still on top, baby. Woo! It's not fair! Thank you guys so much for the support as always. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Thank you to all the Porter fans for liking and subscribing. And to those of you that aren't Porter fans, maybe you've never even listened to Porter and this is your first interaction. Maybe you're just a fan of mine and you this is your way of being introduced to Porter. If so, definitely go listen to his other work as well. Worlds and Nurture are great in their own ways and he'll always be my favorite artist probably i don't know why that would change let me know your thoughts thank you so much i'll see you in the next one and keep on jamming out my dudes peace